So, Jameson, do you identify with some of the things that Dr. G is saying? Yeah, I mean, 100%. I think especially as like a young person who is having basic things like school or prom or sports, anything taken away from them, like the things that fulfill your life, you know, you don't know if you get to go to college normally. Um, it's very frightening and it's very earth shattering. And especially me already being sort of a controlling type A personality, this was kind of like my safety net to latch onto. This was the one thing that I could control and it's what took over my life essentially. Well, what's striking me is that this is a recurrent theme. Jameson, you mentioned it, Sloan, you mentioned it, and Dr. G, you really brought it. It's all about control. Now, I'd like to bring in psychotherapist and author of Express Yourself, A Teen Girl's Guide to Speaking Up and Being Who You Are. Welcome to the show, Emily Roberts. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Emily. So, Emily, we're going to continue talking about control. Why is this such a big thing when it comes to eating disorders? It's perceived control. It's something that we can often feel like we are doing to protect ourselves and our biology in that way. It's a very primal thing. So what do people generally do? They try to grasp control from some other area of their life. And in this case, and in many cases, like we're seeing, it's around exercise, food, and what we've all discussed before, the theme of control. Dr. G, as fellow physicians here, I think we need to focus on some of the health issues. And I don't think people realize that eating disorders represent the most dangerous, potentially deadly mental illness conditions out there. So we're talking greater than depression and the potential of suicide. I mean, this, from a health point of view, it doesn't get much much bigger than that. Dr. Orton, I think you really hit on it. People don't realize, they think, um, I control my food, I'm healthy enough. If I'm controlling and restricting more of my food, isn't that just being healthier, right? So one of the biggest difficulties for people who are living with eating disorders and for people who are loving people who live with eating disorders is that even when someone doesn't look undernourished, they're very often with an eating disorder malnourished. So they're taking in by accident the wrong things or not enough of the things that they need. And those things, as you know, can be as simple as sodium and potassium. Uh, drinking lots and lots of water to try and lose weight can drive down some of your basic blood salts that you need, some of the vitamins and nutrients that you need. And it can lead to invisible but deadly complications heart risks, heart arrhythmias, kidney failure, things that when I'm just looking at you, especially over a Zoom screen or a telehealth appointment, I can't know if those things are happening. If I see you in person and I can weigh you, and you know we've agreed that we're gonna do a weigh-in to make sure that you're getting enough calories and I can draw some blood work because we've agreed we'll do that, we get a better picture. So the pandemic makes how dangerous this can be much harder for health professionals to monitor. 100%. I mean, eating disorders potentially can affect uh, every system in the body. If you're, if you're really protein deficient, uh, it can affect a lot of things, malabsorption and, and uh, poor healing, brittle bones. I mean, all sorts of things 